All right, so here's a diagram of what's going on. This is our initial position here before the, the second mass over here is moved. And our final motion is going to be the act of that, of that force moving that second object. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to want to take into consideration is the, the point particle system. In the point particle system, I'll refer to this diagram right quick. We're going to refer to the whole system as one point, and that's really simplistic for doing certain computations. And initially, our point's going to be that average, that average point between the two positions. And I calculated that right here. And then same for the final. We calculated that here. And we're going to be using these numbers to answer the following questions. So part A, part A, if you can't read it, it's also in the comments section. But part A is asking for the distance, which the point of application, the force. Okay, so it's basically asking for the displacement between the points from here to here. And that's really simple because all we do is subtract this point from this point, pretty much basic definition of displacement, and we get our answer over here. Okay, part B is asking for the work done on the point particle system. And so work is defined as work is defined as the displacement times the force. And there's only a force in the x direction, so that's what we're considering here. So when we multiply those two values together down here, we get this answer over here. Part C is asking for what form or forms of energy change throughout the, the process. And for point particle systems, the only form the only energy forms that change is translation not a vibrational, not any other forms. It's only translation. And that is if there's a translation there's a translational kinetic energy occurring, which is pretty much any movement of an object or set of objects. Okay, and part D is asking for the mass of the system. And the, that's easy, just add up the two masses, the Mass one and mass two have the same have the same mass, which is 0.16 kilograms. So that'll give us a total mass of 0.32 kilograms. Provided, of course, that the spring has a negligible mass. And part E is asking for the final speed of the point particle system. I'll show this one up close. This one this is the formula for the velocity provided that the displacement of time is not given. So the square root of the acceleration times the distance, and by the momentum principle, we know that acceleration is force over mass, which I have here, and yet yeah, d's for distance. I should have put delta x, but and then plug in values. We just found this uh, bottom value here, right up here. And we and I equivalented this answer. Okay, and one more part F is asking for the final and change in the translational kinetic energy of the system. I put them together because the for the initial motion, which you can refer back to, there is no movement going on whatsoever. So there is no initial kinetic energy. There's no initial translational kinetic energy. So the final translational kinetic energy is going to be the same as the displacement because there's no initial to subtract from the final. And we know we can figure out the final translation, translational kinetic energy by this formula here. And we already found the total mass and the center of mass, the, yeah, the total mass and the center of mass velocity which I plugged in over here, and I get that answer in joules. Okay, and that's for the point particle system.
the real system, this is a little bit different, but this is referring to the two objects individually now, or we're allowed to. And the first question is asking for the, the new distance, or the distance provided that we're analyzing the real, the real system. And that's going, the way I would look at it, is that we're moving on the x-axis and that displacement along the x-axis is going to be the furthest point initially which would be object 2 because it has that that distance of 0 0.04 as compared to this uh, 0 distance and the displacement that moves is to 0.13 meters so if we subtract 0 0.04 from 0 0.13 we get, and I think I wrote that right here, we get our displacement for our real system which is notably different than our displacement for the initial point particle system. Because here we're analyzing, the ob we can analyze these blocks individually as opposed to just one point in the system. And I'll try to hurry up. Let's see. How much work was done on the real system? Work is defined as the displacement times the force. The force is the same, but displacement's different. And you can see that right here on this line, and I get that answer. Okay, part C asks, what forms of energy change? Now in the problem, so one, the easy one is the translational kinetic energy. We figured that out from the last problem. Also, we have to take into consideration potential spring energy, just because we're dealing with the spring here. And on top of that, we also have vibrational energy, because that was assumed in the, in the problem. So those three are, are forms of energy that change throughout the problem. Part D is asking for, I'll put them together as the final and change in energy of the real system because again for the initial we're not gonna have let's see we don't have we don't have any kinetic energy for the initial system because the 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 two objects attached to the spring is stationary and we have no potential spring energy because the springs unstretched so that's all zero so that means the final equals the displacement because there's no initial and that's defined as work which we already found and also and okay part E is asking for the final translational kinetic energy of the real system and that's not too bad because that's just defined as this right here and all this pretty much carries over like all these values carry over from the last problem and I get this answer here. Notice we found the total mass and this velocity from the last from the last part. Those aren't going to change. And part F is that, and finally part F what is the final vibrational energy of the real system because according to the initial assumption of the problem we have to take into consideration vibrational energy and we know vibrational energy is equivalent to vibrational yeah vibrational energy is is equivalent to the relative kinetic energy and with that being said we know let's see if I can get this right we know this formula here the total kinetic energy in this case is defined as the relative kinetic energy plus the translational kinetic energy we want to algebraically solve for relative so we just subtract translational so we have this equals that minus that which equals this right here which we found this also and that gives us this value right here and let's see if there's anything else to note I think that's it. Okay. Alrighty. Thanks for watching.